I formatted the IRA project to look a little bit like the seventh grade project and more like Mrs. Perry's classes. Um, I also think that it streamlines the process and I got rid of the point system. So I really think that while the idea is still really the same and kids can do pretty much the same things that they did last um, nine weeks, I hope that it made this a little simpler. As you can see along the side, this is the contract. So if they want an A, this is what has to happen. If they want, if they, you know, get, if they get a B, this is what has to happen. And um, I'll explain some things. Let me start with the A. They still need to get over a thousand pages and at least three books. Um, and out of the two of the book choices, they need to either be nonfiction, an award-winning book, or a young Hoosier. If they read two nonfictions, that's fine. I don't really care. I just want them to maybe try to expand what they're reading a little bit. And then um, my focus this nine weeks and this semester actually is to get them to write a little bit more about what they're reading. So, um, so under written responses, you'll see it says choose eight of the following choices. They can repeat, they can do all of the same thing if they want, but variety will matter a little bit when I'm determining final grade. Um, they can do discussion posts, personal response sheets, logs, and or they can create a blog. Um, they also can write a response, but the response can be no more than two. And a response is when you respond to somebody else's post, and they can do those twice as well. The other ones can be repeated as often as they want. Now a blog, you'll see, a blog is just like a string of posts about the same book. And there has to be a total of four entries, but then that counts as four of the items. So if they do two blogs, that's their eight things right there. Now these have to meet the qualifications to count. And they also must be completed immediately following the completion of the book. Or in the case of a blog, as if it's a big book and they divide it into four parts, they need to write about it before they move on to the next part. This can't be something that's all done the last minute. Um, Same with the logs. Logs can be done, but logs have to be done while students are reading. And a lot of my readers don't want to stop and log. And so I, t I tell them it's probably not a good idea to do that. Um, anyway, so now we go, we go to projects. Notice there's this big fat word, or. Okay, so it's an either or. I'm really trying to get kids to try to, to create some authentic um, uh, discussions about their books, so I'm really trying to get some of them to do some book clubs. Um, so they, but not all of the kids really want to, and so I am offering a choice. So under projects, they can do two poster projects or presentations, one of each or both that can be the same, and presentation is a PowerPoint, a Prezi, a Glogster, anything that's digital like that. And a poster project is anything that's done on a poster board. That means Instagram, the um, Facebook pages, the um, book uh, covers, anything like that. That would be considered a poster project. They need to do two wrap it up sheets. Um, and those are very similar to what they did in seventh grade with their books. And they need to have two video recorded book talks. So they audio cord or videotape themselves talking about their book. Okay. Or they can choose two of the following. You can do two of the same projects. So if they want to do two book clubs, they can. If they want to do one book club and a video project, they can. These can all be done. The book club and the video project can be done with other students. So if maybe a group of kids picks pick one book, they do a book, book club over it, and then they do a, um, a movie trailer, they're done. And then, of course, you'll see Outstanding Project of Choice. And that just means I've gotten some really neat projects, and I want to be able to um, allow students to still do those really great projects, um, especially if they're really artsy. OK. And then, of course, Quality Level. In order to get an A, um, it needs to be exceptional. You know, it needs to show a depth of understanding of the text. It needs to show originality of thought, thoroughness, attention to detail, and needs to be, you know, technically correct. Okay, so um, I, I, 
and A is over and above, and I need to see that they are um, meeting those qualifications. Higher level thinking um, in terms of, of reading and, and responding and that kind of thing. Okay, now I'm not going to go into t a ton of detail, but to get a B, obviously everything is a little bit less. Um, you'll notice I say here I will allow blind date books to count. Um, some of my students, the ones especially that struggled a little bit um, picking out a book, did, did a blind date survey with Mrs. Beechler and then she matched them up with a book and that was really a fun process. And I will count this um, for those who are on some kind of modification because of, um, a, and they have a resource or something, so they can talk to me about that. Uh, let's see, and then I dropped it down to seven. And then here, I've dropped it down a little bit, and you can see that. Um, and then, of course, an average grade, five, at least 500 pages. They need to complete four of the following, and then they need to do two poster projects and two wrap-it-up sheets. And then, of course, let's just drop down to just in order to not get a zero. They need to at least read a book, a minimum of 150-page book and complete a personal response sheet or discussion um, post. If you'll notice, now this is going to change a little bit because I think we've pushed back the third nine weeks and I will send you an email. But um, I always do an early deadline, an early due date, and then I give a grace period. But the grace period is, is that. And so I can't accept their IRA projects after the grace period without a huge and major deduction in points because the actual due date is, is well before that. Um, one thing you'll notice is if students turn in the, uh, their project by the, by the actual due date, they can subtract one of the written response items. So like if they're getting, if they want an A and up here it says choose eight. If they know they're going to turn it in by that Friday, then they only need seven. And so it just kind of, it's kind of to help me um, motivate the kids to try to get some things turned in early so that I can get a jump start on grading. If you have any more questions, um, please send me an email or have your child ask me. Um, this is meant to uh, be easier. If you've done a few things that with your child already and you don't know how it fits, don't worry. I will make sure that if you've already done something, we will make sure that we can get it to fit one of my, um, uh, rec or one of the things on here. Okay? Thanks.